Hi, I'm Lene Pettersson, and today we'll learn about creating a website. I'll start with some background information. We'll look at how to plan a website. What questions to ask ourselves? What materials do we need? What to think about? Then we take what we learn and make a website for the bake shop. Finally, I'll do a short review of what we have learned. Let's start with the background. The internet is a global network, and as more and more people are getting smartphones, it's also a mobile network. Globally, more than 4.5 billion people now have access to the internet. Most of them use social media. So websites and social media together enable people to share information and connect with each other. There are websites for all kinds of needs, communities, shops, education, but also for entertainment and fun. For a business, there are also many benefits. You can find new customers, connect with your existing customers, show your products, sell your products, and much more. So the internet can provide added value for a company. Websites are also easy to make. Let's look at making a website now. When you start to make something, it's good to first do some planning. Spending some time on this before we start creating can save a lot of time later. It will also make it more clear what we want to do. Some things to consider. When I plan a website, I try to ask and answer some questions first. This will tell me what I need for it and also show some things to think about. Some questions we could ask for the bake shop are, what kind of company are we? Do we have images of our products? What do we want a website for? Who is our audience? What are they interested in? What is the budget? And you can think of many more. We might not always have an answer for every question. If you want to train this, then a good exercise is to try the reverse. Choose a company you like, go to their website and see what information their pages have. This will tell you what questions they want answered and who their audience is. If you do this with a couple similar companies, you will usually see patterns. Now let's look at the bake shop. So the bake shop, what kind of company are we? Well, we are a bakery. What role does our website have? We want the page to show our services and contact information. We could also expand this to show recipes, offer reservations, if we have a cafe, and show content we have on social media, podcasts or videos on YouTube. Who is the audience? The audience, the people we make the site for, are who we want to reach. For a bakery, this can be very local, so the local town or even part of the town. We want people to visit us and spend some time with their friends. They could also come and just buy some nice bread. And what is our budget? Well, we have no budget as we just make the first page now. So with these answers, we can go to the next step. We'll need some materials. We could use images, text, videos, and even sound. For the example, we will just use text and images. The text should speak to the audience. We want to show necessary information like address, opening hours, some products, and other things that our customers want to know. The text should have the answers we talked about earlier when asking questions. We also want to have some images to use. We have our nice logo, some pictures of baked products, and a picture of our bakery. With these, we are ready to make the website. So let's take the text and images and get started. There are many different solutions to making websites. For a small business or a personal website, there are really good tools where you can create your own website without technical knowledge. They also usually offer a free basic version. Some examples of such websites are Wix.com, Squarespace.com, and WordPress.com. So let's use one of those for the bake shop. I've chosen WordPress because it's the largest platform in the world. They estimate that over 35% of all websites run on WordPress. Using it will teach us some good new skills. Let's start by going to WordPress.com. Uh, here we'll find the button to start creating our own website, so we will press that. Uh, WordPress will ask for an email address, a username, and a password. We already have an email, so we will use that one. The and the username and obviously the password. And then we press Create Account. After this WordPress, we want to know what kind of website we're building. We'll choose Business and then enter Bakery as we are a bakery. Now WordPress will show us a possible visual layout for a bakery. It looks pretty good, so we will continue with that. 
Next, they're asking for the name of the business. So let's enter the page. And again, we press continue. Finally, WordPress will ask us for a name for the domain. Domain is basically our address online. So let's give it a big shop 000 and press enter. WordPress will suggest uh, a few different versions of the name. Some do cost money, but others are free. As this is a test, we'll just go with the free one, which is here. After that, WordPress will still try to suggest a few options. Depending on what kind of business we are, we might need enhanced features. Uh, for this test, we don't, so we will just choose start with a free site. All of the settings that we have entered, we can also change later. So. Next up, we'll start modifying the site. WordPress will actually suggest a few steps we need to do before we actually can launch the site, but we could also do it in our own time and not follow them. But they're good, so let's start there. Press update the home page and wait for the site to load. There will be a nice uh, quick intro if you want to read how to work in WordPress, but we can look at that at a later time. Here we have the site with the ready-made content. It's nice, but it's not ours, so we need to change all of this. There are a few ways to do this. Uh, one, we can just click on anything and start doing. Two, we could add the materials first. Let's actually go back and to the site here and media. We can add media. And again, WordPress will tell us how to do it, but we can just choose next here and then either drag and drop images or choose them. So let's do that. We have a few images here and we can just move them over here. It will take a few seconds for them to load. After that, we can see that we have the logo and a few pictures from the bakery. Now, if we go back to home and then to update, we can use the images that we just uploaded. We don't need this, so we can just go up here and choose remove. And instead of that, we want the logo, so we need to go and add something. In WordPress, uh, the structure is built on blocks, so everything you see on the page is different blocks. We can add blocks with different type of content depending on what we're doing. Uh, for this, we want a block which is called image for an image. And now we have the image block here, and then we can choose which image we actually want. So let's choose the bake shop logo. With the mouse, we can then move the image all the way up to the side. There we go. Now we have the logo at the top. Next up, we want to change this image. So we click on it and choose Replace. Uh, we can open the media library and choose any of our pictures. Let's put her there. And we can do the same for this one also. Obviously, the text here is now a preset text from WordPress, so we want to use our own. If you recall previously, we asked ourselves questions that we needed, and for those questions, we have written down some answers. So we have a nice text here, which we will copy and put in there. Finally, we have our address, and we can enter our own there. We also don't need this part, so we can remove that. And now the site is pretty much done. Finally, if we have done all the changes, we can actually go up and press Preview to see how it looks. And here we have our logo, some text about us, what we are serving, prices, and actually the address. We can also choose the phone here if you want to see it on a mobile phone, which is really handy. So close that and update. Now, if we go back to the main screen, we still have to do two more steps before we can actually launch the site. One is to confirm the email, which would mean that you open your own email and press a link. And after that, you just press Launch Site, and the site will be live. Let's review what we've done today. There are billions of people online globally. They all have access to websites. But the local business can have a very local website with information for its local customers. The websites are fast and easy to make. We don't need technical knowledge for this, but we do need content. There are many ways of making websites for free. Some good things to remember.
we make websites for customers. And for this, planning and asking questions is a very good tool. A good plan will also save a lot of time later. I hope you found this lesson useful, and you'll be making websites very soon. Thank you.